How's it going everybody? For this trip, I am hiking to a backcountry lake where I hope to do some trout fishing and some tarp camping for one night. This trail that I'm on is in a town called Woodstock, New York, which many of you might be familiar with because of the Woodstock Music Festival. The festival is named after this town, although the festival did not take place in Woodstock. Bob Dylan also spent a period of time living in Woodstock and uh, famously recorded the basement tapes at the Big Pink House with the band. And uh, that house is still here in Woodstock and you can drive by and see it and I believe you can even uh, rent it out and stay there overnight. It's supposed to be a beautiful day today. It's currently a little bit above freezing and I think the weather's calling for it to be uh, in the upper 40s and mostly sunny for the day. So it should be a great day of hiking and fishing. Just have to hike these four or five miles to the lake first. The trail I'm on today is the Overlook Mountain Trail. And it's a very popular day hiking trail that uh, heads up Overlook Mountain and goes to the remains of an old resort and then goes to a, a fire tower at the top of Overlook. The fire tower is actually closed right now because of the COVID-19 situation. So I don't think I'll be headed there. But once I get to about the top of Overlook Mountain, I veer off and continue on past everything and I uh, eventually catch up to the Echo Lake Trail and that trail will take me directly to Echo Lake, which is where I will be camping tonight. As far as the Overlook Trail goes, it's a uh, pretty boring trail, honestly. It's uh, just a gravel roadbed, so it's really wide and open. And you pretty much just ascend Overlook Mountain at a slow and steady pace all the way. Not too much to see. You just walk up the mountain. And here are the remains of the old resort. We'll go check these out. I've done this hike before, uh, but I haven't really explored these remains too much. I am at the trail intersection here where I can head to the fire tower or the trail splits off and heads to Echo Lake, which is where I'm going to go. But uh, I think I'll walk along the fire tower trail for a little bit here and just see if there are any good lookouts or views from the trail itself. And then we've got two miles to Echo Lake. It will be nice to uh, get off of this gravel roadbed and get onto a real trail. The fire tower is closed um, and as tempted as I am to just climb it anyways, I am going to listen and uh, not climb that today. But there are, or there is another uh, lookout up here on the top of Overlook. So I'm going to head over there and get a view. And there is the Overlook Fire Tower. 
can still get an idea of how awesome the views are even without climbing the tower and you can see they do have or they did have the uh, tower blocked off someone ripped through it and went anyways but we're not going to go up there today Well, I'm on my way to Echo Lake now. It should be about, the sign said two miles from that trail intersection. So, and it's mostly downhill, I believe. The uh, Overlook Fire Tower is at about 3,100 feet. And I'm not sure the exact elevation of the lake, but I know it's about 1,000 feet or so below the fire tower. Somewhere in the 2000s or just under 2000, I think. We have arrived at the Echo Lake Trail. So we've got 0.6 miles till we're down at the lake. It's been a nice, easy hike. Although, with all the rain that we have had lately, the trail is very wet and muddy. can see here Echo Lake does have uh, designated campsites and so you have to camp at these campsites um, they're pretty specific about where you can sleep here so I'm gonna go find a spot and get set up I walked around the lake a couple times and picked out a campsite so I have just started to kind of get set up I've got the tarp shelter uh, set up right now at least an initial setup I might kind of play around with it later tonight, but at least if weather comes in or anything, it's set up and ready to go if need be. And then if I feel like messing with it more, I can. I'm going to get my bag and uh, pad and everything in there and all good to go. And then I'm going to eat and uh, start trying to fish a little bit. I've got the bed all set up. So I've got the tarp pitched in kind of like a diamond setup. And I've got it tied off to this tree back here. And then I've got a stick here. And then I've got the uh, Bora Gear Bug Bivy. That's what I've got everything inside. Don't necessarily need the Bug Bivy, but with the prevalence of Lyme disease up here in the Northeast, I think it's worth it just to bring it for the extra protection at night. So I've got that, and then I've got my usual Exped pillow, the z 20 degree sleeping bag, and the NeoAir Xtherm under all that. And then once I go to bed and get inside the bivy, I just take this piece of shock cord in this little loop and clip it on. To this carabiner up here and that holds it up off my face at night and that's it and plenty of room in here for gear on either side it's not uh, supposed to rain tonight although there is a slight chance of snow depending on how on how the day progresses I can always drop uh, drop this down lower and kind of readjust the sides if I need to but it's set up for now and ready to go uh, if I need to get in the tent I'm just making my way around the lake, fishing as I go here. No luck yet. Been mostly trying just different spinners so far, rooster tails and a couple other ones. It's not as easy when you don't have a boat to uh, get in the water and go wherever you want. Kind of limited by 
the parts of the lake here that are accessible. This entire lake is surrounded by evidence of beaver activity. And you can see all the trees they've taken down and the dams that they have built all over. Here's the Echo Lake Lean To. It's uh, definitely a nice site and you've got an amazing view out front of the Lean To. But you can also tell that it's pretty heavily used along with most of the other campsites at this lake. There's just a lot of trash and different remnants left lying around. So in the summertime this is definitely a popular spot. But today I've got it all to myself so far. There's, there hasn't been anyone else out on the lake. All right, well I have had no luck yet. Spent a couple hours fishing on and off here and walking around the lake. I am gonna head back to camp and uh, make some coffee and put on some warmer clothes. It's not too cold out really, but there is a real strong wind coming off of this lake and uh, can definitely feel it. So, we can put some extra layers on, get warmed up, and uh, do another lap around the lake. Here is another example of a campsite at Echo Lake. This is campsite number two, and there are seven campsites. It's got a really great view of the lake. The only reason I didn't come camp on this side is just because of the direction of the wind right now. It's really windy on this side of the lake. So I figured I would go back to the other side. My campsite is pretty much directly across the lake from here. It's in all the evergreens on the other side of the lake. It's a really nice spot. Got my firewood all set up for tonight. That should be more than enough to have a fire for a couple hours once it starts to get dark. The tarp that I'm using for this trip is a eight and a half by eight and a half square tarp, I think. It might be nine by nine. Either way, it's definitely a square tarp. And uh, it is made by Yama Mountain Gear. And I've had a few different flat tarps over the years. This is by far my favorite one. It comes stock with an insane amount of tie outs. You can see all the yellow tabs there. So there are something like one, two, three, four, five or something per side. Yeah, five per side. And then you've got them all gridded out in the middle. And then all of these middle ones that you see there is a inner tie out as well on the inside for each of those. So if you need to, like I do, hang my bivy up on the inside or hang a light, whatever it is you want to do, this tarp will do it. It gives you a ton of options for setup. Most companies will make a tarp like this if you want, but you're going to pay extra for each of these tie outs. I feel like typically you only see three tie outs per side one on either corner and then one in the middle. 
and he adds these secondary ones in between the middle and the corner. Everything's super well done. It's reinforced with the uh, sewn in X there. It's got the extra sill nylon on the back, the loop, and these are all reflective. I've been hanging out at camp for a little while here, just getting everything situated and enjoying this campsite. But I'm going to head it back out on the lake and try some fishing again as we get into the last hour or two of the day. Last hour or two of uh, daylight of the day. So uh, let's get out there and see if we have any luck. I don't feel too confident in it, but you never know. Well, I didn't have any more luck with the fishing. Didn't even get any bites, so just wasn't able to find them today wherever they are in this lake. So I am back at the campsite and uh, just getting ready to do dinner. Try to get dinner done usually before it gets dark. <clears throat> just because it's a lot easier to see what I'm doing. So I've got the water boiling and then I am going to Get everything ready to go here. For my stove this trip I am using the BRS 3000. It's just a uh, real cheap kind of generic Chinese made canister stove but it's one of the lightest ones out there and it's worked really well for me for a couple years now. Well it was a great day here at Echo Lake. Even though I didn't have any luck with the fish it was nice just to uh, hang out and walk around the lake and uh, just enjoy the day out here. Had the lake to myself the entire day and I do tonight as well so that's really awesome just to have this little lake tucked away in the mountains all to yourself. Getting ready to crawl into the tarp here and call it a night. I did tweak the tarp a little bit and I just lowered it about a foot, foot and a half more just to give me a little bit more protection under there in case it does snow, like they're saying it might. Um. So, it is about eight o'clock or so right now and I am just uh, finishing up with my breakfast and coffee. We did get a dusting of snow last night. I woke up around four o'clock or so and the snow was coming down but uh, not too much really. Just a light coat over everything and it's melting pretty quick with the sun coming out now. I am gonna finish up my coffee here and then I'm going to start packing up everything and getting everything organized and ready to uh, hike on out of here. It's a four mile hike out, so it should be a quick one. The tarp worked out great last night. You can see the kind of snow line here where I was protected. Um, and between that and then the bivy on, I didn't feel any of the snow coming down last night. Although I'm sure some blue in there. It took me a while, but I finally got everything packed up. And uh, it's starting to snow a little bit again. <clears throat> I am going to just walk around the lake and make my way over to the other side. That's it for Echo Lake. Now I've just got to climb up 
it's back onto Overlook Mountain. And then it's just a couple miles hike down the mountain to the trailhead. Should be a pretty quick and uneventful hike out on that uh, just gravel road they've got as their trail. I'm disappointed that I didn't have any luck with the brook trout on this trip, but it is what it is. I will uh, have to come back another time and try again, which isn't really a problem because it's a uh, it's definitely a great place to uh, camp out. I passed the old remains, so I'm just on the last leg of this hike. Heading down overlook back to the trailhead. Appreciate you guys watching this video, and I will uh, hopefully see you in the next one.